Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the School Manager Part 3. In this week's continued training of the School Manager, we are going to be adding on a full attachments feature to the students. We'll also be adding on the ability to make them active or inactive and a complete admin screen complete with general information, application settings, users and security, classes and sessions, scheduling settings, certificates and awards, grades and scoring, transactions and settings. We got a lot to cover this week. We're going to do it all from scratch live right in front of you. I can't wait. Let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining us today. We've got a lot to cover in this week's School Manager Part 3. If you haven't seen Part 1 or Part 2, I'm going to include those links down below. We are continuing this. I am building this live in front of you each week that is a complete school manager complete with teachers classes students scheduling drag and drop uh, scheduling week view day view month view notifications email automation dashboard and a whole lot more it's gonna be an incredible series I'm gonna show you how to build this application from scratch week to week so you won't want to miss an episode and I'm gonna do that all live in front of you you're gonna see my thinking my thoughts all the bugs that we come across and how I solve them the challenges we face and how we overcome them when we're building these large-scale applications by the end of this training you're gonna know how to build your own applications and hopefully sell them for a lot of money all right the best way I can bring this to you is if you do subscribe so I want to make sure that you do click the notification icon bell as well as the subscription down below that'll ensure that you get these trainings to you each and every Tuesday. I create them absolutely free for you. In fact, this workbook is also free. All you need to do is click the link in the description below, either with your email or Facebook Messenger, and we'll get that sent over to you. Like I said, I do complete these applications for you to help you build these applications, and I do that absolutely free. The best way to support us, there's many ways, actually. One great way is to grab my 175 workbook zip file. I've got 175 of my best applications. I put them all in a single zip file, and I also added an application library so that you can get to the best workbooks with a single click. Click on the workbook, or click on the YouTube video and that'll link you right to the training. That's only $66 right now, so that would help us out a lot if you can pick that up. I'm going to include the link for that down in the description row. All right, we've got a lot to get started. We're going to finish up a few things on the student information. Then we're going to move into this admin. This is a sample that I created for you so I can show you what we're going to be doing. I'm going to close this up. We're going to take off right where we left off last week so what is that well that is right here where we are we don't have an admin screen yet as you can see we're just building it on and of course in the student section we don't have that admin we need to add an active so we're gonna do that right now because I think having attachments feature is really important maybe you have printed report cards or maybe you have enrollment forms or are things that you want to attach or other pictures or anything that you might have scanned in for a student it would be nice to have those attachments with the student so why don't we do that now why don't we add an attachments feature here as another tab we have this tab is really beautiful so we can add that here and it's really helpful actually the best thing we can do is just pause our screen so I'm gonna go into the developers and I'm just gonna pause it right now pause this code so that's gonna allow me to just select on here and drag and drop here and that's gonna copy over all the formats now again all I need to do is just change that to attachments so now we've got basically the format set I'm just going to put that uh, white border in there so white is the selected I'm just gonna select it here you can't see it I wish they'd change it to a gray background at least not white but you can see now we've got the white so now all I want to do is add in the tab functionality add in a macro and of course program it in now where are we going to put this attachments well probably gonna put it down somewhere uh, below 120 we've used all this space here but I want to put it probably down or starting at right here 122 now I think the best way we can do is just kind of copy something that we have now. I, I, what I want to do is I want to add some fields here perhaps for attachments and then I'd like to have a space for a preview. So when you select on an attachment you can preview it here. If it's a PDF or something we can build out little previews and I'm going to show you that in the future training. So maybe we'll add just about four columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unmerge and center this. I'm going to kind of just copy let's say four columns here and I'm going to go all the way down here. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go down here and then I'm just going to paste that right in here and then we can make changes and updates accordingly so the first thing I want to do is again merge and center this and we'll call that attachments of course and so we're going to give this name attach 
Commitments. That's what I want. What do I want for the task force? Well, I think a date added would be kind of nice. We don't need a time, but we would need maybe the name, a type, and a file name. Now, the difference between a name and a file name is the name is something that you assign. Uh, the file name is something that we can locate the file with. So we want that. And maybe what I want to do is I want to put a border around here. This is where I want our preview. So I'm going to format those cells. I'm going to put a border around here, a black border, all the way around here like that and I'll probably just go with it. That's pretty good. I like the way that that looks. And so the idea is to select on an attachment and we'll add a button here to add the attachments. We're going to need to add an attachment button somewhere around here. And then so we'll, we'll select an attachment and then that attachment will preview in here. And then we'll have additional buttons that we can open up the attachment or delete the attachment or something. So all right, I like that. So basically this is going to be rows 120 through 143. So we need to make updates and add an additional tab. So let's do that right now inside the VBA. So we're going to go into the developers here, Visual Basic, and we're going to go into student tabs, right? That's what I want to do. I want to add an additional student tab. And all we really need to do is just, first I need to make a couple updates here. Notice how everything goes to 120. Well, we need to change that, right? Now I need to make sure that everything goes at least to 143 that's hidden for 143. So how do we make a quick update on that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this wherever 120 is, and then I'm going to change it to 143. So I'm going to copy this, Control C, and then I'm going to do Control F. And what that's going to do is launch the find. And I'm going to look for this. Wherever 120 is found, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with 143. 143 and then dot. How did it know that? Amazing. So, all right, great. So let's go ahead and replace it all within the current module, not necessarily the project, the current module. So replace all and click OK. Six replacements are done. The reason it knew that is because I did this before, once before in a test, right? So that's how it knew it. Because in my sample, I had to do it in my sample. So I want to make that's how it automatically knew that because I did it before. Okay. So now everything ends at 143. So that's the way we want it. But what I want to do is I want to copy student. All right, I'm going to copy this macro and then just I'm going to add one for attachment. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to reset our, which is fine. And we're going to call this student tab attachment. And this is going to attach. So again, we want to hide everything as we always do. And there's better ways to do this. I'm going to show you an updated way, a little bit less code when we do the admin. So it's going to be cool when we do that. Okay, but what do I want to show? I want to show specific rows. And those rows that I really want to show are going to be 122 through 143. So we want to show that 122 through 143. So let's update that at 122 through 143. We want to show that. And this one we're going to hide. We need to hide this one right so it's going to be a little bit different a little bit updated on this one i want to make sure that it's the one above the id card we're showing actually 99 through 120 okay so 99 through 120 that's what we want to do here 120 so well, that one we do want to change back to 120 okay i think we're good now let's double check though we're going to hide this we're going to hide the student picture on this and then what we're going to do is we're going to update that so we're showing that hidden equals false so we're going to show and then i'm going to change this obviously it's an attachment show attachments tab rows and i really should update this text because it doesn't make sense here so this is the student ID, right? And then uh, we want to update here. This, of course, would be the um, exams. And also up here, we'll just update the memo. This is going to be the attendance. We've got to keep track of attendance. We're going to be working on teachers and student attendance. So a lot, a lot to go on there. And then, of course, this one, we're going to update the fees. And also, we want to know the general. OK, so we're good on that. Let's save our work. And we have to add it. So what we want to do is just copy this. Now we want to, when do we want to trigger this macro? That's going to be based on the student's schedule. Students right here. This student sheet right here, that's what we're going to add. It. It's going to be based on selection change. Now it was up to I5, but we need to make it one more column. Now I need to focus on J5, right? If we, J5. So we need to update that to J5 and then add one additional here. Okay, so then what I want to do is I'm just going to paste that in what I've created. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it down here. And of course, it's not 9, it's now 10. 10. Okay, so in 10, what do we want to do is we want to add the student attachment. So let's take a look at that and then click on the attachments. Okay, that's the way I like it. It looks pretty good. That's exactly the way I want it. ID card, making sure that's showing up. 
uh, hidden attachments. So you see how easy it is to add additional tabs. We really theoretically we could add two more if we get some more ideas or you give me some more ideas. I'm gonna add more. We've got, you know we've got a good place up to two different ones. So you see how we can put everything in one area and we can have a really comprehensive. All right, cool. I wanted to make one other update. It's really nice. Um, to have all the students here and maybe we can archive students but I'd like to know which students are active and which ones are not now maybe from this drop down list here we will have all students regardless of whether they're active or inactive but what if I want to schedule students it wouldn't it be nice to have only those students that we want to select students to schedule only those students who are active so we should have the ability to add inactive and active so how do we do that well inside the developers I'm going to do insert and I'm going to insert a form control checkbox form control and right down here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put something called active it's a simple checkbox and then what we'll do is we'll update the code accordingly active now we have to tie this particular checkbox to an actual cell so why don't we use b23 here so we'll just call it student active and it's going to be a true or false component true and then what we'll do is we'll just highlight this in yellow give it that same color we'll drop this down because we're going to be using it a lot more give it that same yellow in the board so we know it signifies an admin type of work that we're doing here okay so now all we need to do is tie that specific checkbox to an actual cell so i'm going to scroll up here so you can see what i'm doing here scroll up and we're going to use a format control and now we see this is based on a cell we know what cell that is going to be b23 so all we need to do is select b23 click OK and now when we make changes to that you see how it changes true to false okay that's great here but what we really need to do is save this information this true or false needs to be actually saved to the student database so how do we do that well that's very easy we just need to make a few updates now I'd rather not update this just yet in other words I need to add a column in here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take this I'm gonna un let's just bring this out a little bit I'm going to drag this over here, bring it over here. I'm going to drag this over here. I'm just going to add another column. So I'll drag this and then this here. And then what we'll do is we'll merge and center this, or unmerge it, I should say, and then re-merge it using that, holding down the control, merge and center there. Okay. Now it's going to, let's just hide, let's select everything there and bring it up. It's getting like a large database there. Okay. So there we go. But now we obviously now have to update the code. And I want to know if this is active. And there's a specific cell that's going to be based on that, not E25, it's going to be B23. Now we map the data accordingly. Now we haven't changed the criteria, we haven't changed this, which is good, right? Because we want to keep it the same, we don't need to change the code. But we do need to update the code that we created when we're mapping and we need to create all the way to X. We also want to make sure that we're running our save and load all the way to column now 23, 23. So let's make those updates accordingly. So all we need to do is go into the student macro, student miscellaneous here, here and uh, we can just update that and just quickly look through the code, okay? So for a new student, what I really wanna do, I wanna set the default. For a new student, I wanna set new students to active. I wanna make sure, here's our students, I wanna make sure B23 goes to true for new students. So when I click new student, I wanna make sure that's true. So how do we do that? We just need to set B23 to true, so dot range, b23 dot value equals true set new student new student to active okay that's all we need to do to add here for the save and update we need to make sure that we are adding all that include columns so we need to update that to 23 column 23 when we make those saves so that's it for the save update but we do need to make a few others when we sort the names we want to make sure that we're sorting let's make sure that y20 remember we didn't change the criteria still y however we need to include that so i want to include this new column right we're now going over if we take a look in the student database here we're now going all the way over to column w and column x we need that full name it includes column x because it's that full name that we're using in our results so we need to make sure to include up to column x so we can do that right here inside our advanced filter right up let's pull that up a little bit so we can see more of it right here w and i mean change that to x our criteria is the same and our results are the same so that doesn't change all right so now that we have that let's pull that up make sure that everything is we also want to make sure we update a little bit more on our student load now we're going to loading from 23 so we're going to change that to column 23 and take a look at this what else do we have student delete everything goes again 23 we're going to change that to 24 updating all that we are going to 
actually change it. That's exactly right. That's what I want to do. And everything else looks good. Show picture, everything else. So we don't need to make any more updates. Let's test it out, make sure everything's working, see if there's any bugs or issues. Save it. Every time we make changes to a code, we always want to save our work back into the student's file. We'll have a menu we're concerned. And OK, so we'll load a student. And uh, we'll, we'll let's go ahead and update this student, make sure that that true gets part of that. And going into the student database, making sure that we now have this under true so this is now true that's what i want for our student which is tina Thames. so it's true so we're saving that that's correct we want that now let's go ahead and load in another student to make sure that that works so let's go ahead that didn't work so we got to update that notice the student name we need to update making sure that when we load it let's take a look in that code because obviously we don't want it to code so when we save a student and we update we take that name and we bring it over there so student miscellaneous so let's take a look right in here when we save a, we want to bring that full name over so up here under save update we want to do is here i want to bring that that's got to go to x right and this has got to go to x and we want to make sure this goes to x right because what this is is copying we're going to copy that formula here here in the student database right here we're going to copy that so that formula is now an x and i want to bring that full name over here and i want to bring it there so i want to bring that full name here from x instead of w and i'm bringing that full name inside our students here to bring it there okay so now we update it now it works just fine okay all right good i like the way that that looks let's click this active click update and then go back to there tina make sure that that active is there go inactive update and then uh, back into there and just to double check oh we'll fix that one that's got to be changed all right good i like that on student load we also need to make sure that we're taking the full name so let's go into the student load macro right here and take a look here student save update load we want to make sure instead of w the full student name is now located in x now located in x okay so when you make those updates make sure you check the code so now when we load the student here we're getting the full name everything is proper okay good that's the way i like it now we've got the active here and then we'll just update that making sure they're all active all right good so now we've got the active now we've got the attachments our students really getting built out now all right before we continue further on this before we start adding things like attachments and exams we really need to focus on the admin screen because the admin screen is going to house where our company folder is and especially for share and sync it's very important that we get that foundation built right now before we continue on with additional features so we're going to do that right now inside the admin we last time what we did is we simply made a list of all the things that we wanted inside our admin screen and this week what we're going to do is we're going to build that out okay so we're going to do just that now the idea is this so what i want to do is i want to have let's say general information here and then in the next section so i'm just going to continue building it out using these columns but i don't really want this merged and centered what i really want to have is making sure that this information here these three information stay at the top always and stay in the same column so no matter when i change the columns hide and show certain columns if i click on general information i want this information to show if i click on application settings then i want to show these columns right so it's basically based on columns so the best way to do that is i want a fixed title right i don't want it fixed i don't want it to move so the best way to do this is just holding down the control and i'm going to group this information i want to group it i want to show just like that regardless and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click that group here and i'm going to set it go into the size and properties i'm going to set those properties i'm going to make sure that we're actually don't moving or don't sizing with cells that way this title is going to be here regardless of the column so when i hide columns it's going to change no matter what okay great so how do we do that we can clear that out we're going to be using it later i'm going to take this data and i'll be adding it soon data validation and i'll just clear it out now so i'm just going to clear it all click OK but we'll be adding the first name last name in a different different part okay so what do we want in the admin also I don't need this merged and centered as well right because we don't have our admin is now based on it's based on this group here so that's gonna stay regardless of whatever column we show so the first section what I really want to do is I want to focus on our general information so general information is the first part of the the first group so how do we get into that well I want to add a title on that general information and I also want to probably skip a column here so I'm going to put our admin menu here actually let's take a look at it. I want to put our admin menu is going to be right here this is our we'll put this is our main dashboard here so let's take a look here so when I click here we're going to show up so let's put this just as a spacer I'm going to keep E 
blank regardless and I am keep E fixed but I'm just gonna add this I'm gonna go all the way over here Let's zoom out it's easier and I'm just gonna color all of this gray everything give it that one color just go all the way to a lot of columns here and then give it that gray background color because we're gonna use a lot and I'm gonna do the same thing for here and then I'm gonna also color it black this one I'm just gonna extend the black so you see I'm just doing it for a lot of columns and we're probably going to go all the way to I'm estimating to go right around columns C like through CT or something because we're gonna go a lot so we've got a lot to cover so let's just do that now go through all of them because I've predicted we're gonna go all the way through through almost like D almost DA so let's go all the way it's kind of small but you can't see it I'm going all the way to right about D C T D A D A is fine that'll cover it so that'll cover it so just zooming out to do that all right so now we've got everything with a background color and I'll say so I want to start building out the general information so the first thing what I want is I want to put a title onto this general information so we know it's the general information and having that title a little bit closer to something that we have on our ad student screen so let's take a look at what we have here and uh, let's take a look uh, let's go back to students here and um, all right so I want to get this basically this color but not this size so that's fine that's what I want keeping consistent so we're gonna call this let's say general information and then I'm going to put this in that blue font and then once we get it just the way we like it and I'll put it italicize and Calibri let's take a look at the, the title we'll put it in Calibri maybe 13 we'll go with okay and uh, so the first thing what I want to do and bold okay so we've got this a little bit larger that's exactly what I want and that's going to go in call in row three there so then what we're going to start is the form so what do we want first so I want the school or company name because we've got it we've got a list down here now we put the list down here why don't we do this this is what I want in there so I've got school name logo contact email phone one phone two so let's put that information inside there inside there so we'll take a look all right so school or company we need that information and then what else do I want? I want contact name. And then down below, email. I'll be skipping a row. And then address. And then perhaps city. Okay. And then I also need to know the state. So we have the city. And then let's just reduce that a little bit. And I'm going to bring this according, let's say, all the way to K. Because it's going to be it's going to be large. And I'll reduce that. Merge and center this. And J is way too big. So we don't need that. It's going to be a smaller form. There won't be a lot going on. All right, so we've got our general information here. Bringing those, we'll reduce them accordingly. Okay, so good. I like that. I like that the way it looks. Company information. What I'd like to do is build these forms a little quicker because you can see there's a lot. So once I get a good uh, specific style, I'm going to save that style. And so what else do I want? I also want a logo, right? I want to put the logo. Let's say in column J, and I want to have a space for the logo. So we'll put that in K. Also, uh, after our contact name, I want to have, let's see, a phone number. So we'll put a phone number here. We want, we want at least two phone numbers for the company. This will go on information. It can go on invoices. It can go on reports and things like that within email. So we'll be able to send that information. All right, and also the zip code. So, and uh, we need a state here. Let's put a state here. Okay, so these are the forms we have built out. So let's, what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. So. I'm going to set it up for speed. So what we'll do is we'll call this white. I'll left justify it, and I'll put some borders around it. Format those cells, and then we'll put a border all the way around it, but the dotted line on the left. Okay, and that's pretty much what I want as far as the left. Now this company information is going to be a little bit bigger, so let's merge and center that, and then go to the left, and then we'll format those cells once again. And basically what I'd like to do is save this as a style so that we can quickly build out these forms. So how would we do that? So let's just choose a standard, a, a normal one, which is like just a single cell, like phone one. That's a single cell here. Again, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll merge and center this down again, copy this, paste it here. So it's a little bit quicker. Then what we'll do, actually I just want to paste, uh, Paste, I want to unmerge and center this, and I only want to copy one single cell, and then I want to paste it in. Then what we're going to do is format those cells, and then just put add that right border on. Now we are ready to save this as a style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here, cell styles here, new style, and I'm going to call this, let's call it field style. Okay, So it's basically our field style, and we have a label style. Okay, so, that's our, so what's our label? Our label is going to be right justified, format those cells and then the border is going to be basically around the black border on the left not the dotted line and then the solid on the left 
top and bottom. Okay, so now we have our field style. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into cell styles, new style, and we're just going to call that label style. So now we have both of them. So now when I want to add this, all I need to do is just simply add this into the cell styles here. You can use either one of these. So let's go ahead and put in the email here and then the address here. I'm going to hold down the control. I'm going to, I'm going to click on the city, the address, the email, the contact name, the state, the zip here, and the phone too. So I'm going to do all of that there. And that's it. So we're ready to go. And I just need to click on the cell styles and then click the field style. Okay, good. So let's say I got that right. Phone one, phone two, and zip. I'm going to bring these down a little bit. One row, give it a little more space for the logo. All right, I like that there. So the logo, I want to do a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to hold down these and this and this and this. We got state mixed up there. So that's no problem, including state. And then we're going to go cell styles. Then we want the label style. Add this to our, of course, our field style. So it's much quicker. There we go, now our form's spinning out. I want these names, these to be a little bit longer. All three of these to be a little bit longer because they're general. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge the center of these and then just double check, format those cells and make sure those borders are all the way around it like this, this, and this. Okay, the logo's are slightly different because I want a larger field for the logo, something like this here. We'll shrink that down a little bit so we can put a smaller logo in here. And so we'll just color that white here as well and then put a border around it all the way for and then I can merge the center of that as well all right that looks good I like that and then we'll just give this the cell style of the label style okay good so now we've built out the general information relatively quickly we've also given ourselves lots of space to add more fields which is really going to be helpful I'm going to put a border all the way around here like this format those cells sorry it's a little bit off the screen let me scroll up a little bit format those cells and just put that solid black border all the way around here okay good so now we've got general information but what about the next screen so we've built that out everything we need is here and then I'm going to bring it so I'm going to skip usually we want to add a few columns right I want to skip a few and just to leave ourselves some space and we'll start at let's say column O here so column O what I'm going to copy this and in O, I'm going to paste it in. And this way, it's going to be put called application settings. So I'm going to change that application. And now it goes a lot quicker because we have the formats set in the style. So uh, what do I want to know? I want to know if it's going to be shared and sync. I want a yes or no. Are we sharing and syncing this file? We're going to add that ability in. But we need to know because it's going to help us make some decisions if it's going to be shared and sync. And also, I want to know if we're going to sort. Remember, we had that sort names by sort and then we deleted it sort names so we need that by in the admin and section area we can put where we want it so we can just put it down here something like put in the options our last name comma first name and then or first name last name okay that's gonna good that's gonna be our and then what we'll do is add a data validation sort names by so perfect so now all we need to do that we got the named ranges here we'll put in a data validation here data validation gonna be a list call it equals sort names by okay very good so now we've got that we can add that and then of course what else do we need on this I want to put in the application sharing folder so let's write here app or shared folder I need that location we're gonna be adding that in and also we want to know the currency format I want to know what format we're gonna be setting we'll be able to set those formats globally within the application simply by selecting them from a drop-down list so the currency format so we got four formats that we're gonna be put in let's just take a look what we're getting in the list let's take a look here so here's what I want to focus on here shared option the shared folder the currency format date format time format percentage format a format table and the sort by options that's all everything we need to cover in the application settings so scrolling up here we're going to do that just right now currency format what else do we need on that i also of course want the date format so we're going to put in date format and then down here i also want to add in the time format and here we're going to put in the percentage format percentage format okay good that's all this is not going to be as big so we can again unmerge and center that and then we're only going to go here to pretty much R is all we're going to do so merge and center that that's fine we're just going to cover to that so format those cells a little bit less we don't need to cover that area putting in there and then let's take a look at that now all we need to do is get add our cell style so share and sync here this one's going to be drawbone 
application shared folder is going to be larger date format here time format and format okay cell styles and that's going to be our field style and then here holding down the control again is going to be our cell styles label style okay i like that just we have to merge and center this make it a little bit bigger on the left and then redo the borders on that and then just add that uh, border here around the okay perfect so now we've got that that looks like perfect what we'll do is we'll be adding an icon i'll be adding an icon here for clicking to browse for that shared folder but i also want to know what are the formats here i also want to add in some formats some cell styles for our again our field so let's do that right now because i've got some that i like here let's merge and center this and one more thing we have to do you see that that icon shouldn't show up why is that showing up let's do let's fix that right now general info notice that this is our general info group general info group but our active needs to be a part of that group because when i switch tabs i don't want this active showing here so all i need to do is click on here the best way is just copy and paste that name ungroup it hold down the control click active regroup it paste in that name paste it in also the last thing every time you regroup right click go to size and property sorry it's off the screen properties and then move but don't size right every time you regroup it we need to change that now we go there we see no it's gone there okay so we have the active now group now it's all grouped together so this group gets hidden or displayed based on the selected tab that's why we always use a single group if we add buttons in here they're going to be grouped here as well so while i have this open what i want to do is i want to save this style and this style i want to save this as perhaps something like a table title and save this as a table header because we're going to be using this style a lot so i'm going to do that cell styles new style we'll call this table title table title and also what i want to do is i want to add in table title okay that's good just the way it's and i also want to save this as a table header so i'm going to do cell styles new cell styles and table header this will allow me to create those formats a lot faster header header because i want to use the same style throughout okay we can then merge and center this back the way it was and continue on with our admin now that we have that so let's go ahead and use that newly created format and we're going to call this perhaps we're going to call this common field format so i'm going to do that common field format so i want a list of those formats and i want to create named ranges based on those i'm going to give it this and i want to give it four of them right so we have date so we can select from a list date we have time percent and currency okay so there we go so now all i need to do is highlight this added the cell style this is the table header then of course i need cell style and this is the table title here merge and center that here okay now we've got our table. so now what i want to do is just basically add a bunch of different formats that we can do and i've saved some in the sample file i've had it here so it's a little bit easier let's just pull that up because i don't want to retype them in in front of you so i'm just going to go into the sample style my recent which was right here and i do have them so it's going to make it a little bit easier and i'm going to go into here admin here and then our application settings and i'm just going to take them see i've got them here and i'm just going to copy that and then what i'm going to do is just go back shift and then just paste paste i guess i can paste it all okay so there we go much easier so these are the styles that i want now we can get rid of that i do want to show you from scratch but sometimes it's a little bit helpful you don't need to watch me type in those okay save our work always save our work all right now let's take a look expand these let's just pull them out double click on them all okay good let's take a look now we can sort let's add in the data validation here and we can see we can click sort names by last name first name first name last name okay and also what I want to do is I want to create some dynamic named ranges for these and then place that inside these here. So why don't we do that right now? Make it a little bit easier so we can understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that and then I'm going to create in this one we've got a named range so we can just do it. Let's do it all offset. So name manager and the formulas and then we'll create them then. So I just want to create a new and then we'll just call this format date. We'll do an offset, even though this one occupies the entire range. Offset. And also what I want to do is I want to select the first one, comma, 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 count A. We're going to count all of them within that range. And then all I'm going to do is just update column one. Okay, tab out, tab back in, make sure that is. I'm going to copy that, control C, and that's going to let us create the others very quickly. Click OK. And now what we want to do is we want to add under one type in format date 
OK and click OK. Next up, I want to do the same thing. New here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do format. And then we'll just call this time. Tab down. And then of course, time is located in column P. So all we need to do is update the column. Instead of O, we're now focused on P. So we just change this to P in the three different locations that we have it inside this formula. Get a hold of that there. And the last one here, that's it. That's all we need to do. Tab out to double check. Tab in, make sure that this dancing ants encompass the data that we have. Click OK. New format percent. Format percent. And the percent, of course, we are going to make sure we're going to focus on column Q. So pasting that in, changing that O to a Q. And it's very, very quickly to do this one here. And now we've got to uh, also do one last one on the currency. So new format and then currency. Pasting that in there, also double check in here, column R is what we're going to be changing that to. Just those four is all we need. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be able to apply that regardless of every single instance and location of the application. Click OK, tab out, make sure that it covers it. Good, click close. OK, so now we can change the currency formats, add that data validation here. Data validation, this one's going to be a list here, and that, that one's going to be our currency format. So equals format and then currency underscore currency. Click OK. So the next one, what else do we want to do? We also want to add the date format here. So inside the data validation, inside the list here, equals here, equals format underscore date. OK, what's next? We also have the percentage format and the time format. So selecting on here, data validation. And then, of course, you can see to get the hang of it now, equals format and then time. And lastly, we have the percentage. So we'll just click data validation. Uh, let's make sure to select that cell first. Data validation here, and then list equals format, and then percent. Clicking OK. So that looks good. Let's take a look. We can select a currency format here. We can select a time format here. Let's go with uh, this one here. Let's go with a date format here, something like standard, and then a percent format here. OK, I like that. We'll double click on that, expand that a little bit. Perfect. OK, so this one I want to know if it's yes or no, pretty much easy. So let's go into data validation. This is going to be a list, and it's going to be yes or no. OK, so now that we have that, we're going to yes or no. And then what we'll do is we'll add a browse, but we'll add that a little bit later on merge and center these, making sure that's merged and centered and then left justified. OK, saving our work. Now we're done with the application settings. Now I want to go into what's next, users and security. Well, let's take on what is on users and security. We have a username, first name, last name, password, access levels, and then access for each of the screens, admin, students, teachers, and so on and so forth. So let's add that in. That's going to be a straight table. So we've got a lot of screens in that. So again, what we're going to be doing here is probably starting with column, let's say, let's go ahead and head, probably V. I'm going to skip three columns, and then we're going to go to column V. So I'm going to copy this here. And what I'm going to do inside column V here, paste that in. But this one, we're going to change it to user, user settings and rights. So I want to know all those. And this is going to be expand probably to, let's just say it's going to be a lot because it's going to take a lot more. So let's update this all the way to here, Merge and Center, and Merge and Center again, User Settings and Rights. So the, what do I want to do? Well, I'll add the borders in in just a moment. First thing I want to add in is a username. Let's say user, probably going to have user detail here, right? So let's put the capitals, user detail. That's going to be our main heading, main title, detail. And then under that, I want to put username. I want to know the username. I want to know the first name, the last name, and also I want to know the password. Now this password is going to be hidden, and it'll just show asterisk, so you won't be able to see those. And uh, we'll probably ask for an admin password to be able to view it. We'll ask an admin, or maybe we'll just re either replace it with an existing password. So next up in this screen, so now we're going to have kind of a separator. So here. So user detail here, I want uh, all this user detail. And here, we're going to put in security rights. So in capitals, security rights. OK, so we got security rights there. And so that's going to be all the screen. So from here, we're going to put all the screens down here. So let's hold down the control. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down all the way to, like let's say, a H here. And we're going to give it that title, that cell style of the table title. All the way down here, we're going to do give it that cell style of the subheaders, which is the table header. OK, but I want to merge and center this and merge and center this. I've got two distinct sections here. So merge and center, let's just go here. And then I want to put right here, I want to put that uh, a white border here 
format those cells because it's kind of a separator there. So I'm going to put that white border. You can't see it, but it's there, hopefully. All right. Now let's add the black border around here. So this is going to be our security and settings and rights. So what we'll do is we'll go all the way to the usernames. So we're putting our screen names here. So last name, let's see, password. Actually, right here, let's say I want the admin's going to be our first screen. So I'm going to redo that. Merge and center. It's only going to come to here. And then this one, unmerge, is going to actually come all the way to here. So we're going to have all the screens here. There you go. That's what I want. Now put that white border on there because I want the admin's going to be our first screen. So that's what I want. So what else other than admin? I want to put in the students. So we're going to put in students here. That's the student sheet. They're going to have access to that. The teacher's sheet, are they going to have editable rights to that or scheduling? Will they have access and editable rights to scheduling or not? Scheduling. We'll have three options for each of those. Let's spell that right. Scheduling. Okay, next up, I want classes. Will they be able to create classes or view classes? And what about exams, tests, and quizzes? I'm going to put that in there. And also transactions. Maybe you want them to create their own transactions or even view existing transactions. Notifications, the ability to send out emails, possible SMS. And also, lastly, the dashboard. Will they have access to the dashboard or not? Okay, so those are the main screens that we're going to focus on. Now I'm just going to highlight all of them and just double click so we have the proper width of those. Okay, so that's good. That's what I want. And now let's bring it all the way down here. Let's just add in, say, all the way to around 25 or something like that. Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to format those cells and uh, do a bit with them. I want the inside dotted line here and then the border all the way around, outside border. I'll make an adjustment on that. And I want to put a fill in, maybe like of white, and then we'll do a alternating row color there. So that's good. And now what we'll do is we'll add conditional formatting, a new row. We're going to use a mod formula. That mod formula is going to help us alternate the color rows. I've got that on auto hotkey here to help me create it faster. I'm going to put a format those. And I'm going to use a fill of probably this light color here because we're using that. That's going to color alternating rows. Okay, good. I want to do a little bit separate. And notice this is the security, this is the user detail. This is the security detail. So I'm just, I'm just going to put a dotted line on the right side because there's some kind of a separation. They're kind of different, right? They're different. So I'm going to put a border. We'll use this dotted line on the left so that we can separate. So basically, these are all the screens that we're going to give them. These are all of the uh, different details. So for example, they'll put in Fred Fredders here. The first name would be Fred. Last name would be Fredders. And then the password is going to show just something like this. That's you know once they end the password it's going to look like that. Now what about for the admin students? What do I? What options do I want? Well, I pretty much want three options. I want whether it's hidden or editable or visible or something like that. So let's give them three different options. Let's say view, edit, and hidden. So data validation. Go into. We're going to add another data validation list. And then first thing, edit means they have full rights. View means they can see it but not edit it. And then hidden means they can't even see the screen. Okay, so those are the three options. So now we can assign this. So for this user, we can give them editable rights and things like that. So that's kind of going to be really helpful. Or this hidden. So we can do that. Okay, good. I like the way that that looks. That's going to be good for now. So we're, we're done with the user settings for a while. We need to add functionality for the password where we can, when they enter the password, one, two, three, four, five, automatically it changes to asterisk and it saves this password somewhere secure. Probably somewhere like right around here or something. Somewhere in, somewhere down that they can't see the password. Somewhere locked up. So that's what we're going to probably do. Okay, but let's continue on. After the user settings and rights, I want classes and lessons. I need to know some information about classes. What do I want? Let's go over here to our notes and see what we have in store for classes. I want rooms, locations, a default teacher, class type, subjects, class type list, attendance status list. So we need some information so we can help us for when we create those classes. So let's go and scroll over here and we'll start it out perhaps right around AL. Again, we're going to skip three and then we're going to on AL. So I'm going to copy. Let's, this one's not going to be very big. So I'm going to copy this one here and then we're going to rename it on AL3. Paste that in and then rename it. And this one we're going to call, let's say classes and lessons. So capital classes and lessons. Okay, so what do we want for that? So I want, again, I want to add different cast lo locations, right? So let's say we have room one, room two, or it could be anywhere, right? You can put any kind of location you want in there. So, but you may want a default location. Let's say you want, let's say generally you schedule classes in one single location. Maybe you want to have a default location, or maybe we want to have a default subject. So we're going to put in that default subject. And of course, we're going to have a list of subjects and a list of locations. That's going to be putting, we're going to put that down, down below. So we have default location. Maybe you want a default teacher. Default teacher. 
generally if you only have one teacher or default class type default class type so now that we have that in there and of course let's go ahead and click on here and double click on there bring that out holding down the control again and then setting our field type this one the home screen we're going to go in the cell styles and then we're going to go the field style and then of course this is going to be our label style now i want to create some lists so what, what's the first list i want i want rooms and i want a list of rooms and locations so that so an admin can add in certain locations or rooms i also want to have class subjects if you want to assign different subjects to class classes that could be of a class types maybe it's something like online or in person or group or something like that you can put in different class type and also I want to have attendance status right I want to know different attendance status so we'll put in something like that attendance status okay next up also want to maybe we'll, we'll put some icons in wouldn't it be cool if we could have some icons I ran some tests it might be kind of cool I'll show you what I mean in just a second and an icon name I'm going to show you what that would look like in just a second okay so I want to give it this our header our default header so cell styles that's going to be our table header double click that here so it's a little bit bigger here okay good that's going to round out what, our, what we're looking for so now basically all I want to do is just kind of copy what I've done here just bring that down something like here uh, we can do this copy all of those and just bring it down and then bring it down that makes it a little bit easier I'm gonna paste that in here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this white here the white background and then I'm going to add a border around it and then I'm gonna extend that conditional formatting so format the cells adding that border around it here and then we're gonna extend the conditional formatting so manage those rules and then we have this if we tab out here, we only have those two columns, but we need to extend it. All we need to do again is just highlight what we want it, and then just to click Apply, and that's going to extend it. Click OK, and I'll add in some borders on this. These are going to be distinct fields, so except for two of them. So we're going to add solid border in the middle, except for two of them. Icons and icon name, those are going to go together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dotted line. Sorry, it's off the screen. Format those cells and then put that dotted line because those are have a relationship together. What do we mean by icon? What would be kind of cool? Let's just close this up before I forget. Uh, format that cells and group that all the way together. Not in white, but in black. Outline that. Okay, good. Click OK. Okay, I like the way that looks. That's fine. Merge instead of this. And uh, so what do I mean by icons? Well, what I would be really cool, I ran some kind of test I thought it was really cool. For those of you that saw it, we did a task manager a while ago. I'm gonna open that up and show what I mean by that. So um, it would be kind of nice if we could assign a specific icon to classes. So here's that task manager. See how I put a little icon just temporarily? It's kind of cool, we can do that. And what I want to do is I want to run some tests to see if it was fast, because now we have to group the shapes. It is fast, it looks really cool, right? So it's fast enough, so what we can do is we can assign an icon to any class, which is not only a color, but we can create different icons. I thought that would be kind of cool, so I did some tests in this, and I think it would be really nice. So. And of course, we're going to add, just so you know, we're going to be adding drag and drop scheduling so we can drag and drop classes and teachers and stuff. But the difference is what I want, like when I select a class, what I want is I want to have a lot of features here. I want to have the list of students. I want to have to put their attendance in. I want to have the teacher's information. I want to be able to replace a teacher with a substitute. I want to have the teacher to be able to clock in. So this right side in our class scheduling is going to be really, really Full, full featured, so we'll be able to add a lot. So not only we can have a week view, we're gonna have a day view and a month view. Each of those views, when we select on a class, I want that those class details to show up generally on the right side. So keep in mind, we'll probably have to shrink this up a little bit, you know, make sure those columns. But this is, we're gonna use shape base, so it's really cool. We can do so much with it. We can edit, you know, we'll be able to edit classes like this. We can edit a class, so lots of things we can do with it. So we'll be taking some from this task manager. This task manager is on YouTube if you wanna see it. Okay, so that was my idea. So that's what we're gonna do. Probably gonna be adding icons. So I wanna have a list of available icons and giving them a name. So when we create classes, we can assign an icon to a class, not and probably a color too, so we can add a color to class. But I wanted to create a list of icons here and then have those lists of icons available in a drop down list once we create those classes okay super cool super cool all right we got it up we could probably move this a little bit to the left right in the merge and center those because i don't think we we really need that extra space but we could if it depends on how big the subjects are something like that we'll keep that in mind we've got some extra spacing here location might be a little bit bigger right so we can bring this over and fully use the space allotted to us so i'm going to merge and send these two fields here and then left justify them and then I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to do the same thing over with default locations we're going to maximize the space 
merge the center of that and left. Okay, so now holding down the control on all of our screens and then resetting that format, that cell style for the field style. Okay, I like that, that's pretty good. We're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna save the work. And now once we've done the classes and lessons, we're gonna move on to scheduling and settings. So what do we want for scheduling and settings? Let's take a look down at our list and see what we've got here. So basically, I want the class times, whether we're starting the last class time. So when, when we set up our schedule, especially on a day view or a week view, I wanna know the first class time. Is it 8 a.m., 6 a.m., or whatever? So that's gonna help us formulate our schedule. So we also wanna know the last class end time. When's the last possible end time? What is the interval? Is it 10 minutes, five minutes, one hour? Gonna be, and the start weekdays, Monday, Tuesday, or whatever. School days, holidays, and terms, terms of the days, perhaps. Okay, so this everything I wanna add inside that. So let's go ahead and put that inside some our cells right now. Where do we wanna start that off? Probably again, we're gonna skip three. So I'm gonna put that starting in AU. So let's do that. I'm gonna copy this. And inside AU, we're going to put that information here. So this time it's going to be schedule settings. So schedule settings. And what do I want in that? Well, the first thing, let's, let's focus on the weekday start. Weekday, what day is it? Monday, Tuesday, week, so on. So the weekday, that's kind of important day start. Where do you want your schedule to show up? And what is the first class start time? First class start time. And the last class end time. I want to know that. The last class end end time what else do i want to know well i want to know what at the time interval the scheduling interval is that so that's going to be here call it time or time interval or probably put scheduling interval schedule interval okay is it 10 minutes 15 minutes we'll have a drop down list there okay so good let's just double click on that maximize that let it and uh, also let's hold down the control and then of course set our formats, our style style, our label style here, and then our field style here for these four fields here. We may add more and we've got space to add more, so that's no problem, field style. Uh, there was test, that's why there's two of them in there. Okay, great, so we've got that. And let's see, now I wanna add some lists down there. So what kind of list? Let's start it out, let's add, just in case we're gonna be adding more, let's drop it down to let's say 12. And I wanna add scheduled holidays I want to know. Let's actually let's put in um, let's put in your scheduled holidays, and when we need to know certain things, I want to know the name, the holiday name. I want to know the from date or the start date of the holiday from date until to date, because sometimes holidays will extend over a period of time, so that's better to this. So I'll uh, go ahead and uh, set the cell style of our table title, and then of course this is going to be our header here. So cell style and then table header here okay so merge and center that but i want to know more right what else do i want to know i want to know what school days right so what is it monday tuesday wednesday so again i want to do school days school let's go ahead and put that down here school days we want to know which days of the week we are actually going to have schools in and we'll start it down here. I'm going to skip one because I want it Monday. And then, of course, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we can just bring that down here all the way to Sunday. And here, so let's bring it down here and here. So, again, I'm going to merge and center this one here. And uh, also the one below here. Going to merge and center that and then give it that cell style. This, of course, will take the table title. This, of course, will take the um, table header. And then we can put uh, scheduled class days something like a subtitle here it's gonna be helpful but inside here I want to know we're gonna like put a check mark so put this this is of course gonna be in the white font because users are gonna be able to select on that and then I'll give it a border around here so format those cells let's go up here scroll up format those cells putting in and since they're related I'm gonna surround it with a black and then a dotted line is gonna be and then I guess I'll put in the black and the blue okay so that's it so I want to put a check mark in here like for example let's say we insert symbol a check mark here insert so that's good that's exactly what I want I'll bring that down here just to give it a look and so we can understand how it's gonna look okay so for these Fields, holiday name, from date, to date, that's what I want in here. I want to know, give it some names. So we'll drop this down. Again, I'll just take a copy of what I've done here, and then I'll just paste it down here, something like that. That'll be nice. Okay, so now again, I'll add the conditional formatting, manage those rules, extend those. I know I'm moving quick, but we got a whole lot to cover. So there we go, apply that. And then, of course, we do need to change that to white on the background, just like we have done in the previous. So white here, and then of course, 
format those cells, adding the solid border around it and adding the dotted line on the inside because they're related, see the related fields. All right, good, I like that. So that's gonna, we have scheduled holidays. We'll probably add some more fields in here, but we're good on that. So merge instead of this, I'll make sure that this is all kind of grouped together format those cells here and then adding the border around it here all the way around okay good getting rid of this we don't need that extra additional border here or here all right good so now we're on the scheduling settings i'll merge instead of this because it's related and uh, probably the interval can move over to here because it's both small fields I like that, and then we can merge and send it this one, and then write justify it here. That looks really nice. Okay, uh, let's add the cell style here, label style. Okay, good, let's save our work. Okay, so after that, we have certificates and awards. Continuing on, we are going to move on to certificates and awards. So I'm gonna copy this here. What do we want for certificates and awards? Let's take a look back at our notes here. Certificates and awards, list variables browse for word thumbnail open certificate name a file path and the certificate type let's put that inside exactly where we need it so what do we want to do so again let's start it out perhaps on um, skipping three going to BC and pasting that in here giving it a name certificates and awards so what do we want I want to be able to sign automatically assign certificates and awards it's gonna be really cool automatically and then send those an email so let's say we're certificates and we could even put in badges or something like that so that automatically they if they complete a test or a quiz certificate i know it's about that right and then perhaps awards or badges just giving some ideas awards or even badges and badges so we're gonna have some information on that so what do i want on that on that on the spell of the j the name we need a name of that i need a type and i also need another file name now the file name not the path because the path is going to be combined that file name is going to be combined with that and i also want to know the thumbnail i want to see a preview when i select on it i want to see a preview and i also want to be able to open it up so all right, I like that. That's going to look good. So we can then, I'll merge and center this around. That's going to be bigger, and we'll increase this. We'll increase all of them, of course, because we want to increase it. So now let's assign this, of course, our cell style. This is going to go, let's see, just for these three, these three, and then we'll give it that top header title. And then these three, of course, are actually four. Let's go ahead, four all the way, and then assign that our table header. All right. Perfect, so now what I wanna do is I also wanna be able to assign a name and we're gonna be able to add it. So again, I'm just gonna simply copy the table that we've created here and then we're gonna extend it. We can create it quickly. And then I'll paste that and then we'll bring it down just a little bit more so that it's, everything's even on this side. Okay, I like that. Now we're just gonna extend that conditional formatting and then I'm gonna put the thumbnail here. This shouldn't say file path, it should say file name, right? Because the path is going to be put together based on the location of the folder. We only want the file name. That way, this, regardless of where it's located, users on a anywhere in the world can then pull it open because it's going to be based on their local drive. So their local. So I'll show you how that's done, of course. Okay, great. So we have the file name. We've got a type. We're going to extend this all the way over to here, adding the white background here, adding the borders around it, formatting those cells the round border the solid border around it filling it with the white color which we did inside the border i want a dotted line then all we need to do is extend that conditional formatting manage rules and extend it all the way to be so just highlight that and then just change it to be okay good apply that okay so you see how quickly we can and i also want to extend the borders onto here when we select this file, we're going to have it, whether it's PDF or whether it's a picture or pretty much even a word we could almost do, but we have a little preview of it. It's really, really cool. We can create those dynamically based on the selection. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. All right. I like that. So I'm going to add a button here eventually to add a certificate. I think that's going to be important. We're going to get to the button soon, but let's build out this specific, all of them and get those tabs working so you can see that. I want to make sure you see that. Okay, good. So we've got certificates and award. What else do we need? I also want grades and scoring. This is second to last, right? What's in going to be in our grades and scoring? Let's take a look at our list, our handy list here. Grades and scoring, we're going to have a grade level, a percentage table, maybe an exam type, exam, test, quizzes, certificate, and perhaps a grade level. So we want to put all that information in. So let's take a look. How are we going to do that? Again, skipping three. So this time we're going to start in BK. In BK, I'm going to add in our information here. Actually, running out of space. Let's think two is enough. We're not going to need so much for this, so why don't we just put it in BJ. So I'm going to copy this. 
Let's take BJ. And then this one's going to be called grades and scoring because it's going to be bigger. Grades and scoring. So what do we want for that? Let's put a G at the end of that. That's going to help us. Grades and scores. So I want to put in a list of grades and scores and scores here. So the first thing I want to know what grades. Well, can they be grades like A, B, C, D? So I want to put that in there. Grades and scores. Because you might, some work on grades, some work on scores. So either way. So I'm going to copy this all the way down here and just paste it over again just like we did. It's going to be three columns. So we can copy that and then paste all those. Paste all. So what else do we want to know? I want to know the minimum percentage, perhaps, or the minimum percent that we can assign that grade. The minimum percentage, or maybe it's going to be a minimum score. So, or minimum score, right? The, the score required to get that grade, 80, 90, 100, whatever it is. So minimum score or grade. Could be both. Could be either one. But we're not sure. So we're going to put in both options now. Give it that table header cell style. Hold down here. Double click on that. Okay. So for example, it could be A. B, C, just so we can get some ideas. E and F. <laughs> F, E. I don't think F is A, B, C, D. I, usually, usually I was around the D level. Okay, but don't tell anybody. All right, so let's just put this in this case. Uh, maybe we better drop this down and make it a subheading here. And we'll just call this, click OK. What I'll do is I'll add a major title called grades and scores, a little bit more descriptive. And scores. Okay, I like that a little bit better. More descriptive, so we have a it's consistent with the theme. I'm gonna merge and center this. There we go. Okay, now we can have A, B, C, D, and then F. Okay, so the minimum might be, let's say it could be a uh, percentage could be 90% or 80%, you know, something like that, 70. But if we're doing percentage, we should format it as such. So I'm gonna hold down the control and then I'm gonna redo it, add in that percentage, and of course 90% would be 0.9. 0.8, 0.7, and 0.6, and so on and so forth. What about the minimum score? We'll keep that in general. And that's going to be 90 if you have, if it's on 100 or whatever. It gives you, you can put in whatever. So that way we can base it if we do want to automate and set those defaults. But what else do we want in here? I also want to know the year or levels, right? So that's important. So let's add that in. So here, year or level, it could be first grade, second grade, third grade, or whatever you want. Year or level depends on. So what kind of would we have? We would have maybe something like first grade, again, first grade, second grade. So let's put that in here, first, second, and then we can just continue that on. Continuing on, so what's it going to look like like this? We can maybe all the way to 12th grade here. And I'm going to highlight, let's just copy the formats here and paste special and then formats. Okay, let's continue down one more and then add the border around it. Just that single column is all we're going to be focused on here. That's going to get our grade level, so we'll be allowed to do that and assign that that header color here. That's what I want, cell style, and then the table header here. So we got years and grades, but what else do I want? I want to know graduation criteria. I think that would be really important. If we're going to be graduating people, what is the criteria? So I'm going to just copy and paste this, and then we can fill it out accordingly, make it a little quicker. So this is going to be graduation criteria. And the first thing I want to do is maybe the level, right? We need to know the level, which level. The criteria points, maybe there's a certain amount of points that we need criteria. To, in order to graduate, you need something like criteria points. Maybe it's based on a number of points. Or maybe it's also based on a percentage. So let's add in criteria. And then maybe it's based on a percentage in order to graduate. And also, it w if there's a specific certificate or award, are they going to be awarded based on that? So we can put that in here too. Certificate or award. Let's add in certificate award because they're going to be longer names so we have a space so it's no problem award assigned so we can assign a specific award to a specific level if they reach a specific percentage or specific criteria nice okay we'll merge and center that and then of course we're just going to add in we need four columns so let's just go over here and add in four columns something like this and copy and paste those make it a little bit quicker and pull that up okay so let's take a look how far that extends i'm going to extend it down farther to the bottom so it's consistent and then just add the borders around all of it format those cells and add that black border all the way around in the outline okay so that's the idea so we have all of that graduation so i'm going to extend this merge the center all the way here and then of course add that border around that uh, area too. Good. Let's take a look. So that's our our grades and scoring. Last one is transaction settings. We don't have too much on transaction settings, but we may add to it. So the idea is this. And let's just 
So the first first grade, you may you may need 80 points, or you may need an 80 percent in order to graduate, and you may may want to have a first grade award or something like that award. So you can have an award assigned to it. Now the idea is that we'll have a drop down list of awards. Those awards or certificates are going to be created here. So we'll have a drop down of these names. We'll be able to create all those certificates and then you can assign that certificate to a specific grade if they've reached a certain criteria or certain points. Nice. Okay, good. So we've got admin. So now lastly, transaction settings. I've got just a few ideas for this, but uh, we can put in so default date maybe I'm not sure about that it may not be I'll just def I'll probably just default to the current date not so important the type of the income expense and the category so why don't we just have a why don't we start it out with just a table of items and then you can create those items can have types so I'm gonna put that let's say in CC I'm gonna leave a lot of room just in case it's our last column so I'm gonna put in a lot of because I don't know if we're gonna need more space just in case Okay, great. Oh, you know what? I just forgot something. I want to put something more in here. I want to put exam types. I forgot that. Let's put an insert here, and then I want to do one more insert here. I want to put in exam types. So just want to add that. It's going to be really easy. So what is an exam type? Let's just put copy that here. Exam types. So an exam type would be, let's say, an exam, maybe a quiz, or maybe it could be a test, or maybe it doesn't even assignment because I want to have that it's kind of important so that we can assign those okay so double click there that looks better okay so we got that okay I like that much better almost forgot that don't want to forget that we want to we need to have exam types okay now we can put in the transaction so it's gonna be a smaller so I'm just gonna copy let's say this one here and in uh, let's say okay CC we'll go with CC here like that and then I'm going to paste in those what do we want here basically I want to create a table of items transaction items so that we can when we invoice or bill or we have a transaction like we buy something we can tr we can track that so let's uh, put in a transaction item table transaction items and then what do we want we want an item name we need to know the item name I want to know the item type is it an income or expense item type and maybe even a category so we can assign a category to specific items when we run the PL, we can know exactly what category what items okay merge and center this here and then of course assign it a cell style here and then also i want to and then center that and then also i'm going to do the same thing for here and give it our title header here all right so again perfect so now again all we're going to be doing is adding three again we'll do just the three he thinks this is good adding these and then I'll just update the format so that's a little bit quicker pasting that in so what would that be what would what kind of item would be let's say we had a school fee school fee maybe you have a school fee and it's a type it's an income type so you put income here and then maybe you want to put in fees or something like that then maybe you have something like in Roma or start fee maybe you start startup fee so some it's a different startup uh, let's just say we have a lesson fee made for a specific lesson I think that that would be also an income but maybe you have a teacher salary so a teacher salary that would be an expense so you put it and then salaries so you can create it like that it's kind of nice and then this would be fees or something like that so that's the idea I have so then when we create those transactions we can quickly we'll keep that just the way it is right now I'm gonna probably expand on that so you may add additional features on that now that we have all the content all we need to do is add in the ability to show and hide these based on the tabs I'm gonna show you an even easier way to do that than we've been doing it's really cool so the first thing what I want to do is I want to know what is the selected row in this case we're using rows in this case we're using shapes but we can use either one of them so what I want to know is I want to know the menu row so in here menu row I want to know which one we selected so let's say if we select three I want this to change color so I'm gonna highlight these here and I'm gonna add conditional formatting I'm gonna click new rule and we'll click use a formula it's gonna be based on a specific cell what cell is gonna be based on b3 right here equals row then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna format that differently so then the other one so I'm gonna use a fill I'm gonna use a fill effect and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna use this gray color and then I'm gonna fade it into white and I'm gonna use a vertical from left to right so that's the way we're gonna go but I also want to change the font I'm gonna use that standard font color that we've been using which is this one and I also want to make it bold click OK and I also want to make sure that there's no border on the right side so let's double check that then the border should be uh, we could probably have a border but clearing out the border may look good or may look just normal okay good that's pretty much the way I want it so when I select something I want this to change and I want this to change let's highlight it's now an admin so let's highlight that and wrap the borders around it 
Good, so we've got that, we understand how we're doing that. This name, last name, first name, we're doing the same thing here. And so once we do it, that's based on selection chain. So what I'm, when I select something, I wanna take whatever row we've selected and put it in here. That's the first thing. So why don't we write that now? Inside the developer sheet, I'm gonna be based on the admin sheet. So we're focused here on the admin sheet. And we're gonna focus on worksheet, but not, we're gonna focus on selection change. When we make a selection change, we want something to happen. And it's gonna be based on anywhere, if we select anywhere from D3 all the way through D11. So that's what we're gonna write some code for just that. So let's write some code for that. That's auto hotkey that automated that for me. So D3 through D11, that's when we want something to happen. So if that happened, then what do we want to do? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to take whatever row we selected and put it in B3. So range B3 dot value is equal to the target dot row. Okay, so let's take a look at that, see what that was. So now as we change it, perfect. So now we can see it. So, but now we want some action to happen, right? We need to hide and show these tabs. So why don't we do write, write some macros for that right now? Relatively simple. So First thing what I want to do is I want to create a module, a brand new module. So insert module, and we're going to call this admin tab. So to change the name, we're going to click on the properties here. We're going to call it admin and then tabs. Okay, so now that we have the admin tabs, the first thing what I want to do is I want to write a single macro that's going to hide everything. And it's going to hide all the shapes. It's going to make it a lot easier and a lot less code. So we don't have any shapes right now that we're going to be hiding, but we do have columns that we're going to hide. I want to hide all the way from starting with column F all the way to, let's say, column CI, okay? From F to CI. So let's write that right now. So sub admin tab hide all, okay? So what are we going to do? We can do admin dot range, admin is a sheet dot range, F, right, so we're focused on F through CI, dot entire column dot hidden, dot hidden equals true. I want to hide everything. So that's the first thing. I want to hide everything. What else do I want to do? Well, we're going to hide shapes. We don't have any shapes yet, so we'll add them in, of course. But um, for, for now, that's fine. But as we add in shapes, we're going to add in. So that's good for now. So the first thing I want to do is copy this and add that inside our specific sheet so admin so again after we add that i want to run this macro hide everything hide let's call this hide all columns and shapes because we will have shapes and groups and shapes and buttons and things like that we need to hide too so just put and shapes even though we don't made it and then what i want to do is i want to run individual macros i want to create individual macros and those individual macros are going to show specific columns. So we can write that up right now. So let's go ahead and, and add in those. So we've done with that. Let's close this one out. We can close this out now. And we'll just keep a space there. So next up, sub admin tab. And then we want to have maybe general info. We need to add that. And then what else do we need? We need to add more. We can copy this and just continue and, and, and paste it in there. And okay, so let's just create one and then it's gonna be relatively easy. So what do we wanna do? Perhaps admin, and let's drop this down so you can see with it. I'm gonna bring this back up here so we can see it. We're gonna focus on F through L, right? F through L, I'm gonna hide F through L. So let's go ahead and hide that now. Admin dot range, in this case, F through L. It's been hidden, I should say, so now I wanna make it visible. F through L dot entire column dot hidden equals false right it's no longer hidden equals false good so we've got that perfect so that's all i want to do so now we can just continue on we might as well write them all it's a little bit quicker we don't need to test them out and of course when we want to display certain shapes we'll add in those shapes we will be adding shapes in some of them but for now it's fine okay so what's next i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to paste it down here and then i'm going to make it so it's not obviously general we can't have two macros of the same name so this is going to be called let's call it application settings and in this case, what do we want to do for application settings? I want to show O through, let's say S, O through S. So all I need to do is just change this from F to O and from L to S. Okay, good. So what's next? So you can see it moves a lot quicker now. Not general, users and security is next. So let's call this users security. And in this case, we're not, we're focused on V, right? V, we're gonna be showing V through AI. So 
All you need is change the V through A. Relatively simple. This repetition kind of gets a little bit boring, but the repetition really helps because you can create these much faster. So if you know how to do this already, then we're going to focus on speed and shortcuts, right? And sometimes we know what we're doing, but we want to be able to create it faster. And so knowing these shortcuts is going to do just right. Obviously, you can't have two macros the same thing. So using security, next up is classes and lessons. Classes and lessons. Okay, and what are the columns? So we're going to start out with AL on classes and lessons. We want to sh display that. Hidden equals false. And I also want to bring it all the way to AR. So AL all the way through AR. Okay, great. So we've got that. What else do we need? Let's make sure that's right. And next up, what I want to do is I also want to show the scheduling. So let's paste that in here. And I'm going to focus on scheduling. Scheduling. Scheduling, let's take a look. All the way from AU, we want to display those. Next up, we also want it all the way to, let's take a look at here. The last one, one after would be AZ. So AZ is fine. And then next up, we have our certificates and awards. So let's paste that in here. Certificate, let's call this certificate awards. And that's going to be BC. So we'll write down BC. And then it's going to go all the way to, let's take a look here, all the way through BH. So we'll put that in here, BH. Almost done with this. It's been really cool. Okay, next up we want to add in, not general info, of course, grades and scoring. That's going to be our next one. So grades, call this grades and scoring. It's going to be a nice tab. So this we can put a ton of features in it very, very easily. Grades and scoring starts out at BJ and it goes all the way to, let's say, BV. So let's change that up. BJ through BV. Next up, what we want to do is lastly, I think we have after that, we have transactions and that's it. So we're going to paste, go down here, paste that in here and call this transactions. You guys want to watch me create these lives. So here you go, transactions. And of course, we're going to focus transactions on, and that's going to start up with CC and we'll go all the way to, let's say CJ on that. Okay, so CC, and then CJ. Now we just have to make these active. How do we do that? Well, let's, of course, save our work before we do anything else. Back into the admin. Now what we need to do is determine exactly which row we've selected. And based on that row, we need to launch that macro. So how would we do that? Well, we check based on that. So, But also what I want to do is I want to make it quicker. And right? I want to do it fast. So I, want to, I don't want any screen flashes. So there's a way to, to do that. And we can add in something called application screen updating equals false and then make it true again. So we're going to do that right here in the code. Application dot screen updating equals false. And then before we finish out everything, we're going to make it true. So application dot screen updating equals true. So what that's going to do is keep from flashing. Okay, so now we're going to base it on the target. So based on the target. So if the user selects row three, what do we want to happen? We want to run that general info macro. So let's write it out right now. If target dot row equals three, then what do we want to do? Then admin tab underscore general info. And if you use lowercase letters like this, and you change and it changes to capitals you see that i'm gonna do that one more time general info when it changes to capitals you know you've got the right macro right if i had the wrong one if i typed in the wrong one like general general info right typing it incorrectly see it doesn't change so that way you know hey something's wrong maybe i typed it in wrong so it's kind of a shortcut general info typing in the right you get that okay great so that's at the target row equals three but what about now all we need to do is just copy this and then add in and paste it in. And then we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. So all we need to do is add in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten of them total, nine and ten. Okay, and now all we need to do, of course, add in the specific macro. So, of course, the next one's going to be for apps and settings. App, if we can, you see application settings. So, app. Again, I'm going to use lowercase just to make sure that I've got the right name, settings. If it changes the capitals, I know I'm good. Okay, that one's right. Users and security. So users, security. That was the third one. Okay, that looks good. And then classes and lessons. Let's say it's not through classes. Lessons. Okay, I like that. No, nope, see, that's wrong. It's uh, missed something here. So lessons. Let's take a look inside 
All right, admins, because you see, okay, all of a sudden something's wrong. It's not what I remember. So go into the admins tab and take a look at that. What was it exactly? Users say it's class lessons, right? So I didn't remember. That's fine. Class lessons. I can change either one. No problem. Class lessons. That's fine. Goes to capitals. Now we know we got it right. See, that's quicker. And you knew if you know something's wrong, right? Scheduling is next. So I like to use those capitals to show me if things are wrong. Certification awards. Okay. And then also we have our grades and scoring. And then what else do we want? We last one was transactions. Okay, good, very nice. I like that. Again, saving our work. Now let's take a look. We've got we can get rid of this extra space and we don't need that here. And then general info. Let's take a look at that. Bringing it out here. That looks good. I like that. It's way too big here. Okay, we don't need this anymore. So let's clear that out. That's causing we don't need that. Okay. Now we'll double click on here. All right, that looks much better. Okay, so general information, application settings. Let's take a look at that, make sure it encompasses all the data. This one's a little bit bigger here, so uh, that looks good. And classes and lessons, that looks good. Scheduling settings, good. Certificates and awards, I like that. Grades and scoring, make sure it encompasses everything. Yep, that looks right. Transaction settings, very good. Alrighty, that's pretty good. Okay, one of the most important things uh, that we have to start out with is app shared folder. I wanna make sure that we have a base folder where our application, because all the attachments, all the pictures, all the files are gonna be stored inside individual folders inside that folder. So that's really important. So let's create that right now while I still got you here, assuming there. I'm just gonna copy this button here because that's basically what I want. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in the admin section, I'm gonna paste it right here. I'm gonna keep this real simple. So I'm gonna get rid of the text here. And I just wanna shrink that button up and uh, hopefully we'll just, and um, we don't wanna assign a macro, at least not yet, in a moment we will. But I wanna shrink this up. Let's just call this 0.25, I'm gonna square. And that's fine, I'm just gonna keep it like that for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group this and I'm just going to call this, we're gonna call this, there might be more, so I'm gonna call this app setting group. Even though it's just a single button, if we wanna add more, it's all, we don't need to change anything in the code. It's gonna stay this, so I'm gonna call it app setting group. And of course, I also wanna make sure that we're not going to change the size of this. So we're gonna go into the properties anytime we group something, move but don't size. I'm gonna assign a macro to this and that macro is gonna place that file path right here inside P6. So let's write that macro right now. So inside I'm gonna add a brand new module and we're gonna call this admin, just miscellaneous because there's gonna be a lot of them called it. So I'm gonna go into the properties and we're gonna call this admin miscellaneous. Okay, and then inside that, what I want to do is create another one called sub admin browse for app folder. So after that, I want to dimension the application folder as a file dialog because we need to create that file dialog. And now we're going to set it. Set the what kind of file dialog do we want? Application folder equal to application dot file dialog. And then what type do we want? We want a folder picker, right? We're picking the folder. I don't want a specific file, I want a folder this time. So that's what I want. Now with our application folder, we can set some things up. What do we want? Well, the first thing what I do is want allow multi-select. No, I just want a single folder. So we're gonna make that false. Next thing, I wanna give it a title. And then we'll just call it choose app or shared folder because it's going to be a shared folder if you're not in shared mode we still need a folder where we want the files to be stored we still need a folder whether it's shared or not we still need that okay so actually let's just put please select i like that better please just say please because you have to ask nicely please select an application or shared folder Okay, at least there's one. So that way we know where to put everything else. Now we just, you know, if they don't select something, it could cause an error. So if dot show does not equal, negative one means they've selected something. So it does not equal negative one, then go to no selection. And then we're gonna drop down here, no selection, and then just put a colon here. Assuming that they have, what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna take that folder, file path, and I wanna place it, where do I wanna place it? I wanna place it directly inside of P6. So we can write that up. Admin dot range P6 dot value equals what? It's gonna equal basically to 
dot selected items one basically is that one selected that's the integer that you're selecting okay great so let's just take a look at that and get rid of the extra spaces here we don't need that and then admin browser folder we can copy that or use f3 to, to grab that but that's okay right click on that icon assign the macro for that paste it in click ok now what we do is we click that save before we do any of course before we run any code click OK and it'll automatic good now it adds that app shield flow so now we have a location so now what we can do is we can start building out in the next training we can start building out a lot more cool so in the next training what do we got coming up next week we're gonna be building out gonna add in user security I'm gonna be building out this admin screen so it's gonna be our foundation our base of the application so everything's gonna be built out here because then we can move a lot faster on this we're gonna add in students what I'd like to do on the student list of course is I'd like to add some abilities some of these for filtering and perhaps sorting on single click sorting and also we're gonna few more I want to add the ability to add attachments and preview attachments create an idea we got a lot of work to do I hope you're sticking with me on these trainings I'm creating this from scratch for you it's gonna take longer because everything is from scratch during the videos so you know every step along the way I really appreciate your patience if you'd like to help us out go ahead there's a mentorship program that I've got available for you in that mentorship program I'm gonna teach you how to define design develop and deploy your own Excel applications for passive income that's helped me in the past a lot create my own applications and now I'd like to share that with you so that's with myexcelmentor.com. you can click on that link or click on the link below and join our program we'd love to see you there thank you so much I really appreciate it we'll see you next week for part four of the school manager I can't wait it's gonna be an incredible application thanks so much everyone